Hi, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Angel Saxena. I'm a director of photography and DI colorist based in Mumbai, India. In this episode, I'm going to start a new series about color grading. So we are going to begin with the basics. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the user interface of the color tab. Okay, so first things first, we have a reference monitor here, which is similar to the program window in your edit page. But in your edit page, you can also see your source window and your program window. But in the color tab, you will only see what's on your timeline. So when you click on clips, you will see all the shots that you have used on the timeline in your edit. And you will only see uh, these shots to be appearing on your reference monitor. So let's start with the left hand corner. We have some settings that don't change uh, with the panels, but these settings, they do. We can expand or collapse these columns like these gallery stills, we can expand and collapse. We can use media pool, alerts. We can even disappear this uh, camera roll or clip roll by just collapsing or expanding that button. Right, and we have some options right here also. We have the timeline, which we can see. I generally, uh, you know, just collapse it, I don't want it. We have the notes panel, we can make it disappear like so. We have effects and we have light box, which you can uh, click to see the view of all the clips that are in the timeline. When you have so many clips, when you have a thousand cut edit, then you will have to scroll in the light box as well, right? But this is very handy to, you know, have a look around uh, in a very big project with the thumbnail and everything. You can expand it uh, like so and everything. Let's get back by collapsing it. Okay, so now as you can see, the gallery stills option has collapsed. Let's bring it back. Now, a still is a thing. You can uh, color grade a footage and you can take a still of that so that you have a reference uh, for later as well as you can use that still to apply those settings to a different image or the same image later on in your progress. Right, so I have some stills right here. I will teach you how to make stills in a later episode. Uh, for now, let's see what LUTs do. We have uh, so many different options that are pre-built into your DaVinci Resolve, uh, even in the free version, I guess. But this is the studio version 18.6.5, just so that you know. We have media pool so that you can see the clips, although they won't appear on this reference monitor. And, uh, and yeah, uh, I can also see my timeline over here. So I can uh, choose my different timelines so that I can use those clips as a reference grade on this particular timeline. So I can, you know, borrow grades from that timeline, from different timelines on the same project. All right, and uh, you can as well as save some presets that you are, you know, frequently using. Now we have the clip roll, which is self-explanatory. We can, you know, choose different clips to color grade them. We have some color grading tools in the bottom. From left to right, let's uh, see some quick ones. We have the primary wheels. We have HDR color palette. We have the curves, uh, different kinds of curves here, as you can see. And uh, we have qualifying tool, we have the power windows, which is equivalent to radial and linear filter in your Lightroom and everything. And uh, we have some tracking tools here and some blurring and sharpening and so on and so forth. We'll discuss these panels in some later videos because I don't want this video to be very long. We have scopes over here. We have different options from parades to waveforms to vector scope and everything so that you can have an idea of your footage, for example, let's see, right? So when I'm overexposing it, it is showing me on my uh, scope. All right, and we have some keyframe animation, uh, you know, settings here. When you are animating a particular node or a particular clip, you can use this panel and we have some information uh, over here as well. So it's basically like the metadata of your clip. So you can use these edges to make these panels big or small. To an extent, it won't go beyond anything, but uh, it is still a handy feature. You won't ever feel the need to reposition them. You can't in this software, like you could in, in Premiere Pro, but uh, they have set it up so nicely that you won't ever have the need to, you know, make the waveform go up there. You can always choose to extend to a different monitor like I have in my main setup, and that will do your job. Uh, you won't ever have the need to, you know, reposition these things. You can just make them bigger or smaller or, you know, just collapse your clips to make the screen bigger 
or to end this video up with you can use these shortcuts which are very handy you can press shift f that will make your uh, you know uh, reference monitor a little bigger and uh, when you have uh, your effects open when you press shift f you will have your effects here and you will still see uh, your reference monitor which is very helpful because sometimes you know you have an effect on one of your nodes and you can change the settings on that effect while having the big uh, reference monitor also you can press shift f to go back and you can press ctrl f to make the screen go full screen uh, which is definitely handy when you are trying to you know uh, monitor what changes you have done so this is it for the user interface of the color page. I hope that you have a better understanding of how you know this page operates. From the next episodes, we are going to cover small, small portions of uh, this color tab so that we go on a slow pace. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for the further updates. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.